Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Banke, and I'm the Manager of Communications and Development here at Forward Community Investments, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Understanding the Voting Process in Wisconsin, with Shantae Nelson, Democracy Director at Wisconsin Voices. Forward Community Investments is a community developmental financial institution that serves the state of Wisconsin. We are an investor, connector, and advisor for organizations and initiatives that reduce racial inequities and socioeconomic disparities in Wisconsin communities. We are able to accomplish through community financing, community developmental services, and grant making. For more information regarding FCI and all that we do, I invite you to visit our website, forwardci.org. At this time, I'd like to share some housekeeping notes with you. This presentation will be recorded and posted on our website for you to share following the presentation. In addition to the recording, we will be posting the presentation slides as well for your reference. An email will be sent out to all participants next week with this information. We will also be taking questions throughout the presentation, so please feel free to ask those questions in the chat or questions box that is, uh, box in the GoToWebinar toolbar that is located on the right-hand side of your screen. As I am sure most of you are aware, there is a very crucial election coming up in November. FCI has decided to act and ensure our partner organizations have the tools and knowledge that can be passed along to all voter eligible citizens that will assist them in registering and voting in the upcoming election. It is critical to note that the politicians that are elected during this election shape the policies that affect everyone. Do not expect someone to speak up for you. You need to speak up for yourself. Once again, thank you to all for joining us, and at this point, I'd like to turn it over to our pre uh, presenter, Shantae Nelson. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, such a great um, intro. Uh, hello, everyone, again. My name is Shantae Nelson, and I'm the Democracy Director here at Wisconsin Voices. I am so very grateful for the opportunity to present this information. Um, I want to say thank you to Ford Community Investment for hosting the webinar as well as thank you to all of you who are on the webinar. Thank you for joining. We're going to jump right in, and I'm going to share a little bit about um, this presentation. Some of the things that we will discuss here on this presentation are uh, voter eligibility, acceptable photo ID, registration, and proof of residency, your rights as a voter, and how to find out what's on your ballot. Um, and then we'll conclude um, and have some time for questions. So I want to make sure that we know that voting is fundamental to democracy and democracy works best when people um, can participate in the process. This webinar will simplify Wisconsin's voting process. Um, our first topic of discussion will be voter eligibility. So here we are um, starting with that now. In Wisconsin, you must be at least 18 years of age to vote. For individuals turning 18 before the upcoming election, you can register to vote at 17 years of age. However, you are not able to actually vote until you are 18 um, years of age. You must also be a U.S. citizen and you must reside at your current address for at least 10 days. Now, if you um, know someone or you yourself are an individual where you've not lived at your current address for at least 10 days, you will need to vote from your previous address and that address must be a Wisconsin address. So. Um, just want to make sure that that is um, well known. There are rules that um, regulate voter eligibility in Wisconsin. It is important for us to understand these rules and know how they affect us and how they affect those who are around us. In Wisconsin, as a resident of Wisconsin, we cannot vote if we are serving a felony sentence. So if a resident is on paper or on parole, they will not be able to vote um, until that sentence is over. However, once that time is served and their sentence has concluded, their voting rights are restored and all they'll need to do is register to vote um, and re-engage within the voting process. Residents can also vote if they have, um, they can't, I'm sorry, cannot vote if they've been um, adjudged incompetent. So if someone has a court order stating that they're, they are incompetent, the judgment disqualifies them from voting. Residents also cannot vote if they have been, uh, if they've placed a bet or a wager on the outcome of the election. And um, finally, 
residents cannot vote if they have already voted in that particular election. So if someone has voted absentee for an election or if they um, vote during an early vote time, that person is not able to cast a ballot on election day. So again, Wisconsin, um, some of the things that we know about Wisconsin is that we are a photo ID state. And so we require a photo ID in order to uh, obtain a ballot during an election. Um, and I want to make sure that we know that there is no separate voter ID um, card that's needed. It's simply your photo ID, your Wisconsin's driver's license, or your Wisconsin state ID, along with the list of um, other items, which we'll review later on in this presentation. But overall, it's either a Wisconsin driver's license or a Wisconsin state ID. Um, and these are the only identification um, products that you need when you go to cast your ballot. Um, if your um, ID is expired, there are other things that you would have to do. So ID should not be expired. And if they are, they must not be um, expired or must have not expired, I should say, since the most recent election. And in this case, that would be November 6, 2016 election. Um, poll workers are going to look at your photo. They're gonna look at your name and the expiration date of that photo ID. Um, when you go and vote. And so when you um, vote, one of the things that we often try to communicate to individuals is the address on your photo ID does not have to be current. It does not have to be your current address. However, that address must be the updated information within the Department of Motor Vehicles, as well as the address by which you have registered. For um, additional information, you can absolutely visit um, that particular website that's there. Um, the thing that I want to make sure you, many of you know as well is that you only need to prove your address when you're registering to vote. Your photo ID proves who you are, but your voter registration proves um, where you stay. So some voters are registered as um, absentee voters and they can do that. And there are some times where um, when you register as an absentee voter, you are exempt from showing a license or a photo ID. When you are a confidential elector, um, you are exempt from uh, photo ID requirements and confidential electors are basically individuals who have been presented with a court order or a letter from law enforcement or um, a letter from a staff of a domestic abuse shelter or staff of an agency assisting victims of domestic abuse. In that case, no photo ID would be um, required, but that information must have been applied. Um, that, that status, I should say, must have been applied at your municipal clerk's office. If you are an active military or permanently overseas and you're voting, you're not required to have a photo ID when you, um, when you vote absentee. However, if you are uh, actively a part of the military and you are able to vote in person, at that time when you cast your ballot, you do um, need to present a photo ID. If you are an individual whom um, is considered indefinitely confined, um, and it's basically hard to get to the polls um, on election day due to age or illness or infirmity or you know disease, something of that nature, you can request that a ballot is sent to you as an absentee ballot, and in that case, they are not able, um, or you would not be able, you would not be required to show a photo ID um, as an absentee voter. Um, as well as uh, one other situation where voters who are in special care facilities can um, be provided an absentee ballot, um, and there's a, um, a certificate envelope and substitute for showing the photo ID. However, in any of these situations, anytime we vote in person within the state of Wisconsin, we are required to show who we are, which is our photo ID. Like I said, for additional information, there is the website. Um, as it relates to photo ID and the acceptable uh, pieces of photo ID that are uh, um, available within Wisconsin, I wanna make sure that we understand that this list is not conclusive. It is important for us to know that these IDs should not be expired or if expired again, they should have expired after the most recent general election. So in this particular case, at the time of this webinar, that would be November um, 2016's election. So some of the most common um, 
photo IDs that are used during an election are, of course, the Wisconsin driver's license, the Wisconsin state ID card, U.S. Uniform Service ID card, U.S. Passport, and that can be a book or a card. These IDs um, may um, also be used in a case of trying to vote the Wisconsin state driver's license or ID receipt from the Department of Transportation if that receipt has been issued within 45 days of an election date, a uh, certification of naturalization, and it must have been issued no earlier than two years before the date of an election. A tribal ID card must uh, be a federally recognized tribe and it cannot be, uh, or can be expired or unexpired. And then a veteran affairs ID card, which must be unexpired or have no expiration date at all. Um, students can also use their college ID um, to vote in Wisconsin. However, it must be a photo ID that is issued by a Wisconsin accredited university, college, or technical college. Um, and it must also contain this um, information. It must contain the date the card was issued, a signature of the student, an expiration date no later than two years after the date the card was issued, and the ID must be accompanied by a um, document that proves enrollment. So some examples of those documents are tuition fee receipt, um, enrollment verification letter, class schedule, um, and this documentation in addition to the student ID is documentation that can be pulled up on a cell phone and showed um, shown um, on the cell phone to the election clerk. Um, here um, are some additional uh, um, information around photo ID. Um, the ID must include your photo, it must include your name, and it must include an expiration date. And this is just kind of like a reminder um, here. The address does not have to be current. A lot of people get uh, mixed up with whether or not the address on their photo ID have to be current and up to date. It's not required when you go to vote um, and because it proves who you are. So in the state of Wisconsin, you have to have a, a photo, your name, and an expiration date when you're using that particular photo ID to vote. Now, in addition to that, there are some forms that um, some forms of identification, identification, I should say, that can be used, but they do not re require a photo. So any citation that is dated within 60 days of an election can be used as a, uh, identification for the voter. A lot of people are unaware of that. Any notice of intent to revoke or suspend a driver's license, that notice must be dated within 60 days of an election and that particular paper or paperwork can be used as identification when you go to vote. Additionally, any Wisconsin issued ID um, that for religious reasons does not include a photograph, that ID can also be used to vote. You do not need a birth certificate to vote. Um, however, if you have um, documents such as a certified birth certificate, a social security card, proof of residency. It's always important to make sure that you bring that information with you to the DMV when applying for your free Wisconsin ID card. The state of Wisconsin does provide ID cards for voting purposes and those ID cards are free. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we go in this presentation. Um, if you do not have a certified birth certificate or, certificate or any of the other documents that we've talked about here in this presentation, the DMV does have a petition process that will help you to verify your records and that process is also free. Um, other than that, you can use the state ID card receipt from the DMV in order to um, uh, vote on election day. Additionally, um, here are some additional examples of acceptable photo ID for voting. This is a great printout to have um, and a great printout to share, and this list is not conclusive. However, it's a great visual if you are maybe um, in a situation and someone needs to see visually some photo IDs that are available. And so we'll just leave this just for a minute so people can 
kind of jot down. Of course, like I stated, University College um, or Technical College ID plus the enrollment for, for um, verification, tribal, tribal, tribal ID, uh, certificate of naturalization, Wisconsin State ID card, driver's license, um, a valid um, license without or, I, or card without a photo, U.S. service um, ID, passport, veteran affairs ID, um, as well as the receipt for your card or your ID. All right, now we will discuss proof of residency. Proof of residency is needed to prove where you live. Again, I stated that um, the photo ID show proves who you are, proof of residency um, proves where you live. These documents are not required to vote. They are only required to register to vote, which is um, the first process in the voting process. So in Wisconsin, we must register to vote before we can vote. Wisconsin, um, requires us to prove that we are a resident um, of the state and that we've lived at our current address for at least 10 days. So if you are a first time voter, if you have moved, or if you have changed your name, you will need to register to vote, or if you've moved or changed your name, re-register to vote. Um, to register to vote, you can visit uh, this website here, which is myvote.wi.gov. Again, that's myvote.wi.gov. This is a state of Wisconsin website, and all of the information inputted in, um, to this website uh, is uh, information that goes directly to the Wisconsin Election Commission. On this site, you can also look up your voting activity, um, and we'll go over that a little bit. Um, later in the presentation. It does not necessarily show who you voted for, only that you voted and in which elections you voted. This is important information to have and to be able to review, especially if you are um, an individual where you vote absentee, you can confirm that your vote was counted. You can also use this site to check the status of your current registration and ensure that you are registered at your current address. Now, there are multiple ways to register for an election um, in the state of Wisconsin. One of the ways, of course, is um, by mail. Um, and if you register by mail, as long as it's postmarked 20 days before an election or before election day, um, that form must be printed out, signed, and mailed or delivered to your clerk within your, munis uh, your municipal clerk along with proof of residency. You can register online. Um, it has um, the same website, the myvote.wi.gov, and you can do this also up to 20 days before an election day. The voter, um, when you register online, you as a voter, you will, you will be asked to enter your name, your date of birth, your driver's license or your ID number, and the address that matches your D, the DMV's website. So whatever address you used at the DMV. You can also register at your municipal clerk's office until um, five o'clock on the Friday before an election or until that um, clerk's office closes, whichever is later in that day. Um, and last but certainly not least, you can register to vote on, a, on election day, which we're really excited about that great convenience. Um, proof of residency is required when you register to vote using any of these methods. Uh, it is important to remember that your photo ID and your proof of residency serves as two um, serves two different purposes. Proof of residency proves that you are a resident of Wisconsin. It shows that you are a resident. It proves where you live. Photo ID, on the other hand, proves who you are. So if you have a valid, which means an up-to-date Wisconsin driver's license or up-to-date Wisconsin state ID, and that particular license or ID has your current and most up-to-date address on it and it's not expired, you can use that ID as your proof of residence to register to vote. However, if that particular um, license or ID does not have your current address on it, then you would use one of the other forms of proof of residence in order to register to vote and still be able to use that ID or license in order to vote. 
Um, only certain documentation can be used to register to vote. Uh, documents must be um, uh, must be one of the items. In Wisconsin, we basically have a list of items that can be used to prove residency. And so some of the most common documents include, but they're not limited um, to a valid unexpired Wisconsin driver's license or Wisconsin state ID card, a document issued by a unit of government. Um, remember I stated earlier um, some of those documents a utility bill um, good for 90 days, a bank statement. These are all documents that can be used. This is not a complete list. There are many other documents that may qualify for proof of residency. If you have um, questions, feel free to contact the Wisconsin Election Commission. However, there are some additional documents um, that can be used. You can use a paycheck stub. You can use residential lease. You can use a concealed carry license, a hunting license, an affidavit from a homeless shelter, and an IRS check. But again, like I stated, if you have questions and you want to find out uh, additional proof of residence documents, please contact the Wisconsin Election Commission or your local clerk. So with so many options for proof of residency, you must ensure that your proof of residence includes your current name and your current address. Um, something to remember, your proof of residence can be viewed electronically on your phone or on your computer when registering to vote in person at a clerk's office or on election day. All right, so you've heard a lot um, from me and a lot of information so far, and I wanted to just kind of give you a little bit of a break from my voice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I wanna introduce Lisa Lucas, who is our Communications and Development Director um, here at Wisconsin Voices. She's gonna give you some information about same-day voter registration and share some key things to remember on election day. Once she completes this component um, of this presentation, I will return and share how to understand what's on your ballot. So please welcome Lisa Lucas. Thank you very much, Shante, and thank you to everybody for being on this webinar. Um, like Shante said, I'm gonna talk about same-day registration and what happens on election day. Um, so let's see, the, let me get here, here we go. First thing everybody should know is that it is legal to register on election day in Wisconsin. We've um, had this law in place since 1976. And so allowing registers to register voters to update their address or their name in addition to new voters being registered has been a key feature of Wisconsin democracy. Um, and having it in place has consistently made us one of the higher turnout states across the country. So this is a really, really important law that um, we wanna make sure that we keep in place. So who can use it? You can use it um, if you need to register to vote. If you've never voted in Wisconsin, if you've previously voted but you've moved at least 10 days prior to the election day, or if you have a new name, same as any other, um, any other person who needs to register. What to bring, same thing as if you register elsewhere, like Shante was saying, bring a photo ID and a proof of residence. And again, if your photo ID does have your current address on it, you can use that as a proof of residence. And if it doesn't have your current ID on it, you have to bring one of those separate documents. So um, hopefully everybody here has been able to vote recently. Here's basically a rundown of how it goes. Um, when you walk into the polling place, you check in with a greeter who will be there. They can help you figure out where to go. Um, if your polling place has multiple wards, they'll be able to direct you to which ward line you need to go to. They can help you verify if you're already registered, if you need to fill out new registration forms. There's a greeter who's there to help people um, is the important thing. So once you're in line, in the, in the voting line, if you're already registered, the poll worker will ask you to state your name and state your address, um, and then they'll ask to show your photo ID. And again, they're looking to make sure that your face matches your photo and that the expiration date has expired after the last general election. They are not looking at your address. Um, 
Also, what's really important is that the name on your photo ID does not have to be an exact match to the name on the poll list. So for example, if your photo ID says Robert and your and the poll list says Bob, that's acceptable. If it says Sue and your photo ID says Susan, if it conforms to a nickname, that's completely acceptable and, and has to be used. Um, and then poll workers will ask you to sign the poll book. Um, they'll find your name, they'll find your address, they'll point to it, you'll put in a little box, you'll sign your name. Um, if you're unable to sign, you can inform the poll worker that you're unable to do so, and then you'll, you can be exempt from this requirement. They'll just write exempt. And then they'll um, issue you a ballot and give you a little number and send you off to the, to the voting booth. Now, if you don't have an ID on Election Day, you can still vote. You can cast what's called a provisional ballot. And this um, gets a little complicated, but it's basically a ballot that's marked by you, but not able to be counted at the time that you cast it. So um, there's a couple circumstances where a voter could receive a provisional ballot. One is um, somebody who forgot to bring their ID somebody who um, has a current and valid Wisconsin driver's license, but is unwilling or unable to list their ID number when they go to register for whatever reason they don't wanna list it, they can do provisional ballot. Um, and then a first time Wisconsin voter who's registered by mail, but didn't provide an establishing proof of residence document at the time they submitted the registration form can also re do a provisional ballot. Provisional ballots are not given when a voter is at the wrong polling place. If that happens, they'll just be directed to the proper polling place and hopefully they'll be able to cast a regular ballot at the right polling place. Um, provisional ballots are also not given when the person is trying to register in person on election day and doesn't have proof of residence. That's only, that's only a requirement if they registered by mail before um, I believe it's April 2014. So if you've met, registered by mail before then and not on election day, that won't count. So if you're trying to register on election day and you don't have your proof of residence, you cannot cast a provisional ballot. You have to go home and get a proof of residence, come back and vote. Um, provisional ballots are, like I said, not counted. They're only counted if you're able to show your ID to your municipal clerk by the Friday after the election. So if you have to cast a provisional ballot, it's very, very important that you get to your municipal clerk's office on the Friday, but by the Friday after the election, show them your ID, your acceptable photo ID, and then your ballot will get counted. Um, not many people do this. There's not a lot of people who follow up with provisional ballots. So what we are really encouraging is to just make sure people are very, very well versed in knowing what IDs they need to bring and some of the regulations that go along with it. Because it's, it's not a lot of people who go and show their photo ID to their municipal clerk after they cast a provisional ballot, but they are allowed one. Um, and then if they, if somebody needs accommodations, there's accommodations available for anybody with um, disabilities or physical impairments. Um, so they have accessible voting equipment. They also have curbside voting. If somebody can't enter the polling place for any reason um, or due to disability, uh, curbside voting is available. That just means a couple of poll workers will come out to you, bring your ballot um, at your vehicle or at the polling place entrance. Um, if you do vote curbside, you're also not required to sign their poll list. The poll workers will write exempt in the signature space on the, the poll list. Um, curbside voting is also available during um, early voting. So if you'd like to vote curbside, what's best is just contact your municipal clerk ahead of time so you can discuss, they can discuss the arrival and help you figure out what to do. Um, if you have trouble on election day, um, here's what you should know. Poll workers in Wisconsin are um, saints. They're great resources. They are civil servants who work long, hard hours. Um, 
they're not easy jobs, especially with these laws that have been changing a lot in Wisconsin. So um, they have a lot to do. They have a lot on their heads and they don't always get things right. So it's, um, it's important to remember that there are people called chief election inspectors at poll locations. And if you feel like you are being given the wrong information by a poll worker or something's just not sitting right with you, you can ask to talk to the chief inspection, uh, chief election inspector um, to try to get that straightened out. Let's see, we talked about provisional ballots already. There's also a phone number you can call. It's 1-866-OUR-VOTE. O-U-R-V-O-T-E, that's the National Election Protection Hotline. Again, it's 1-866-O-U-R-V-O-T-E, 1-866-OUR-VOTE. That's um, a national group of lawyers who help a lot when trouble arises at the polls. So if you see something that seems a bit off or shady, please give them a call. We also have in-state lawyers who work on election protection. Some of the easiest ways to get a hold of them are social media. So we have a, the, their Twitter handle is at EPWISCO, E-P-W-I-S-C-O. They are a fantastic resource and they are also on Facebook at Wisconsin Election Protection. So if you have any trouble on election day or you know anybody who has any trouble on election day, um, please, please, please tag Wisconsin Election Protection in a post on a tweet, let them know, and they will um, help you out. Uh, and then, like I said, be nice to your poll workers. They are civil servants. They are doing a very, very, very important job under a lot of pressure and a lot of um, legal constraints. They are doing the best they can. So please, please, please be nice to them. <laughs> All right, Shantae, back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so yes, please be nice uh, to your poll workers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to share um, how we can understand our ballot. Um, the website, of course, um, I've shared a couple times here during this webinar is myvote.wi.gov. And this site will help you to accomplish a number of things. You can find your polling location on this site. You can update your address and check the status of your registration. You can, of course, register to vote. You can review your voting um, history. Uh, this site, of course, like I stated, will not tell you who you voted for, just tell you that you have voted and in what elections, um, as well as you can use this site to request an absentee ballot, request that it's sent to you. Uh, but for the purposes of this particular section, you can view what's on your ballot via this site. Um, ballots are typically available 47 days before a uh, um, national or presidential election um, and 21 days before a state and local election. So even if we went to the site right now today, it would be we would not be able to see kind of who's on your ballot because uh, we've not we've, we're not close enough to the November election. However, um, to find out what's on your ballot, you will visit this site and you would simply select what's on my ballot. You would enter your home address and typically a list of representatives will be tabulated once you advance to the next screen. Um, if you do it within the time frame, like I stated, 47 days for a federal um, contest or a presidential election, and then 21 days for a state or local election. Of course, at this time, nothing is going to be available because it's not close enough to an election. However, if you have additional questions, um, you can visit your Wisconsin Election Commission. Um, and on the next slide, there is information provided about the Wisconsin Election Commission. It also gives you um, information that, as to where this presentation will be housed. One of the things that I would like for um, those of you who are on the line to do is um, if you're interested in receiving text messages about the election, these text messages, you're not bombarded with text messages. We do not become those who um, overburden you with text messages. However, maybe a reminder to vote, 
um, information that can be kind of like right at your fingertips to um, tell you where to go look up your polling location for election day. If you will please take the opportunity and text VOTE, that's V-O-T-E, to um, this short code, which is 864-237. So you go right into your messaging, um, your text messages, and the, in the two, like as if you are going to send someone a text message, you would key 864-237. And then in the message, you would just simply type V-O-T-E, that's vote. Um, and you can, we will be added onto our um, text messaging service to receive additional information as it relates to the election. Now, I do want to say that messaging and um, data rates may apply. However, um, I want to give that information. Again, um, to contact your Wisconsin Election Commission, you can dial the number that's on the line, 866-VOTE. Wisconsin or vote WIS again 866 V O T E W I S. Um, that is 866 868 3947. Again, 866 868 3947. Or you can visit myvote.gov. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention today. And I am going to turn it over to the hands of Tom. Great. Uh, well, thank you so much, Shantae and Lisa. We really appreciate all of that useful information coming through. Um, you know, it's great to you know great to revisit this, and you know, thank you so much for your time. Um, so, at this point, we did have a few questions um, that did come through. Um, so, uh, maybe we can answer a few of those. And obviously, if you have any more, uh, feel free to. Um, uh, to to type those in as we're as we're answering these questions. So, um, I had a couple questions with regards to voting registration and things like that. So, um, an individual is asking if they are not registered, um, where can they go to register to vote? Okay, you can go to the myvote.wi.gov, and on that website, you there will be um, a list of boxes at the top and it'll say um, one of them will be register to vote. You can actually go online and register to vote. Um, voting is an online or register, I should say not voting. Voter <laughs> registration is an online process here in Wisconsin. Um, and so you can actually register on that website. Additionally, like I stated, you can do voter registration um, via the mail, as well as at your municipal clerk's, clerk's office, as well as if you decide to do in-person um, absentee voting, which is early voting in Wisconsin, you can register to vote there as well as on election day. Great. Thank you. And um, I'll also at this point, too, like to mention we've uh, been working with um, just here in, uh, since we're based in Madison, we've been working with the League of Women Voters of Dane County and um, they're having voting voter registration drives throughout the city. So um, if you, um, you know, if you even are outside of Madison, um, there are different chapters of the League of Women Voters here in Wisconsin. And if you uh, just do a simple Google search of League of Women Voters, you can find the chapter in your area. And they should have a listing of uh, places that you can actually physically go um, to register to vote. Um, I will put uh, a little um, ploy in for our organization, FCI. We're working uh, to help folks get registered as well. So there's a few events where uh, we'll be having some uh, voter registration booths set up. So uh, if you contact uh, myself, uh, Tom Banky, um, or just check our website, we'll have uh, some more information about uh, voter registration registration and things like that. And Tom, if I can just share one more thing of about course. voter registration. Um, September 25th is National Voter Registration Day. Um, so across the nation, there will be groups whom will be doing voter registration events and hosting voter registration drives. Um, so just that will be another like a day and even leading up to that date as well as after that date, there will be a lot of um, voter registration drives that are available, as well as I know if there are any residents in the city of Milwaukee, you can go to your public library and register to vote as well. So 
those are some additional. Yeah, thank you, Shante. Um, a couple things on that, too. Uh, you can also, if you're in Madison as well, um, you can uh, register to vote at your local library as well. So that's great. And also, too, thanks for bringing up the uh, National Voter Registration Day. Um, that's definitely something that FCI will be, um, you know, promoting and things like that. Um, we may have a few events lined up uh, here in Madison and then um, over in Milwaukee as well. So that's another uh, great opportunity and kind of a call to, you know, bring the importance of, of, of voter registration and things like that. Um, since we're keeping on the voter registration deadline, I do have it, I, I kind of was making some notes during the presentation, and actually the voter registration deadline that, um, uh, Shante, you had brought up, um, which was three, what was it, three... <laughs> Uh, the third Wednesday before uh, the election day. Um, that is actually um, October the 17th. So I know that um, that's, uh, you know, a good, um, you know, date to keep in mind and things like that. So I do have one more question uh, with regards to actually when you're at the poll um, and this individual has actually gone through, um, had, had this happen to this uh, individual. And uh, do you have any advice for uh, if you, Go up to the poll, go to your polling place, um, you know, give them your name and um, your your ID, and they say that you're not registered. Is there um, any any way to, uh, you know, talk about that, um, kind of things that they can go through to hopefully ensure that they are registered or, or, or even register that day? Yes. Um, one of the things that I would encourage anyone listening or viewing this webinar to do is to, um, if you have the, the capacity and the ability, to visit the website, the myvote.wi.gov. Prior to actually going to vote, you can check your registration status. Um, that is a great website to have, to remember, um, and you can check to make sure that you're registered at your current address. If you find that the website states that you are registered, that would be, then you would just take, of course, your photo ID in order to register to vote. In a situation where you are um, told that you're not able to register to vote, if you have the ability to, if your photo ID is current, up to date, has your current address, um, and is not expired, you can use that photo ID in order to register right there at your polling location. If you are in a situation like a number of people throughout the state of Wisconsin where your ID, maybe you've moved or you've purchased a home or something of that nature, and you no longer have um, your photo ID is still valid, it's not expired um, within that time frame, but the address on your ID is not your current um, place of residence, then what you could do is you can pull up on your cell phone um, a, a, a copy of your bank statement or a copy of your energies bill or, you know, one of those documents that we listed as acceptable proof of residence, you can actually pull that up on your phone with your ID and you can still register to vote there um, on election day. So those are some additional options as well. I, I don't really encourage people unless you just absolutely have to, to turn around and go home and grab something. If you can pull the information up on your phone, I always encourage people to pull it up on their phone because they will, um, they will allow that in voter registration. Great, thank you. That was a that was a great uh, great answer to that question, and a lot of a lot of good options there. And to your last point, you know, we, we don't want you to turn around and, and and walk away. We want you to to work it out and try to you know try to make sure that you are registered and 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 that you have the ability to vote. Um, so I think that's about it for questions. Um, I just wanted to you know thank thank everyone for joining us for today's presentation. Obviously, a special thanks to Shante and Lisa for their hard work uh, in putting this presentation together. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, um, an email will be sent to you all, uh, to all participants next week, which will be including the recording, webinar slides, uh, as well as um, some other helpful links uh, as well. Um, wanted to also note um, that you can see we are uh, planning another webinar for com uh, 
coming up on Monday, September the 24th. Um, this one will speak specifically uh, on, the, on the role of nonprofits uh, that they can play during the lead up to elections and on election day. Uh, more specific information regarding this presentation will be available in the coming weeks, so, uh, so hang tight for that. Um, and lastly, I would like to spotlight another project that an FCI partner is spearheading, uh, which is called uh, Race to the Polls. This is a special project of Kids Forward, Race to Equity, and the Wisconsin Budget Project. As a public policy and advocacy organization, they see the importance of centering the voices and needs of communities of color in the democratic process. Through their data and policy analysis, they have found that alarming racial disparities exist between Wisconsin's white population and its African American, Asian American, Latinx, and Native American populations, which stem from hundreds of years of inequitable policies. Our hope is that the Race to the Polls project can help support and amplify the work of people of color and organizations committed to racial justice, as they have been doing so for many, many years. Everyone must play their part in making Wisconsin the best place for every child, every family, and every community, including us. For more information about this project, please visit racetothepolls.org. And we'll also be including some information about that uh, with that link in that follow-up email that I had mentioned earlier. So um, at this point, just wanted to thank everybody one more time for taking time out of their busy days. I know that it, um, you know everything's busy. We're getting uh, all set up for the uh, extended holiday weekend. So uh, once again, thank you all. Thanks to Shantae and Lisa. We very much appreciate everybody's uh, time and we will be in touch and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.